So if you've seen the last episode of Log Thursday, you knew I started out being a little bit upset and this is what I wanted to rant about. So now that I'm done recording the vlog, I'm recording this real quick. So this is hopefully the next video. Anyways, let's jump into this here. The Kaseya IT RMM software for MSPs. Now, give you a quick overview if you're not familiar with this. What um, MSP is, is managed service providing, and it's something we do with our clients. So we are an MSP, we means we manage and are the outside IT for a company. So they pay us a fee, we then monitor actively their IT. Now that means we need tools, and those tools, uh, those few choices out there, are full disclosure, right now in 2018 and for the last several years, we have been a SolarWinds customer. We have used a SolarWinds product, so I'm not uh, bashing on this company specifically, I'm calling out some security vulnerabilities. So it's not that I'm, I don't like them because I don't use them or anything like that. I want people to really think about this and really uh, take time because too much, too much, and this is the part that makes me mad, of IT people I meet are driven by price. They're like, Tom, I can't make enough money at that. I can't make enough money at this. They look at software going, well, the margin's not good enough. I'm like, I start with, when I'm deciding on software, security, utmost, always, first and foremost, is this a secure product I'm using? Great. I do care if I make a few dollars because we all have to stay in business. I'm a business owner. It's important. You got to make money at things. So that is a concern. So it's security, it's features, and price. Those are factors. Security, though, is not a factor. It's an imperative. If it's not secure, I'm not using it. If it's maybe secure, I'm not using it. That is a huge thing for me. Now, this is also really, really hard to figure out whether or not something's secure, but we're going to talk about the flaw that happened here because this is very scary to me, and I don't know why it's not bigger news, but if I'm in the IT service business, this should be huge news because this is a popular piece of software. So this is their uh, Kaseya VSA Next Gen Remote Monitoring Tool Management Software. And this is the same thing, we similar to what we get with SolarWinds. Like I said, competing products here. You get these cool dashboards and they show me whether or not you got your patches loaded and everything else. And this is also how you scale up your company. We use automation software. So we manage you know hundreds of computers and clients and um, all this stuff from dashboards that let us see everything in mass. But that comes with a little bit of a risk. Obviously, if this tool has remote patch management, remote control, network performance, antivirus, anti-malware, and cloud backup, and those integration levels are at the server and desktop, uh, that means this program, whatever program you choose for your IT automation, has a lot of power over those servers. So this is why security is important. You want the company to be very, very secure. That being said, let's talk about what actually happened here. And then some of my aggravations with this. So the the few people broke the news here, and this is, I'll leave, of course, as always, all the links below. So uh, Kaseya Virtual System Administrator has been compromised. Now, this is what's going on. This is a, the way it was found, and let's break down this, is from a security operations center in East Entire. That's what these folks are. Manage detection hackers never take a break, neither do we. You know, I'm not super familiar with the company, but what they are is what they call them a SOC, which is a security operations center, and they look for anomalies in some of the outgoing traffic and manage your firewalls. That's an important thing. Um, that being said, watching IPs in your computers from a network connecting to weird IPs is a reactionary process, by the way. Uh, and this is what they found. And there was a PowerShell script, and this was launched via the Kaseya system. It then downloaded, now this is this is where things get a little bit tricky. You have different protections that block websites from coming in, like a UTM or a Universal Threat Management, which is your firewall system. I'm sorry, Unified Threat Management. Anyways, the concept is the firewall does blocking of sites. Once again, reactive process. So you hope the sites are blocked. And now, how did this get through? Not real clear. I, I would love if they gave a, a more clear debrief. We're going to get into that in a second. But it, the short of it is, the reason the script was able to get through is it's, is it's simply a PowerShell script. And the PowerShell script was downloading from Dropbox. And we know that from Huntress Labs over here. PowerShell payload for K, uh, Kaseya VSA Monero malware. It changes registry keys and added there. New storage release, blah, blah, blah. And in short, though, and they break it down in here, I think at the bottom, that it was downloaded from a Dropbox account. So because Dropbox isn't on the blacklist, 
it automatically had a no problem uh, downloading those because, well, you don't blacklist Dropbox because most businesses use it or have to have access to it. So this is how it got through. And so all that fun blocking stuff that UTMs do did nothing because you can't block Dropbox or you'd have a different business problem. Here's the payloads it downloaded. The real question is how this happened at Kaseya, how did this tool that was used to control um, all these systems get compromised and now they have a patch for this is this is tragic this is terrible this would be a big disaster this is what worries me about so many of these programs is how good is the security we have to blindly trust some of them they're not open source they're not giving us any look at how they actually manage things inside their company but you can develop ideas and patterns from companies and the reason i say that now it's funny because please note this is a cached google page of this. And I'll leave this link in here as well. Action required, KSA, VSA product of vulnerability. Litecoin mining malware. And you're probably thinking, wait a minute, Tom, you just showed me Monero uh, mining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was a year ago. One year ago, same problem. And the reason I'm bringing a cash one, they deleted this off their website, and I don't know why. But once you've put it on the internet, it's on the internet. Thank you for Google Web Cache and things like Wayback Web Machine. So, and I love, look at the phrasing here. While the mayor have allowed unknown attacker to access endpoint systems that may contain sensitive data elements, we have seen nothing to suggest this malware was harvesting personal financial or any other kind of sensitive information, or any individual's information has been misused as a result of the attack. And of course, this is the actual page, link not found, they deleted it. I guess because it looks bad when you use the same phrasing again here in January of 2018, we have seen no evidence to suggest that this vulnerability was used to harvest personal financial or other sensitive information. However, we are aware a small subset of our partners where Monero cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency mining software is deployed to the endpoints. The fact that they were able to deploy this, that raises massive alarms, not because it happened once. Security is really, really hard. Because with security, you have to be right every day, 24-7, all the time. With the hackers, they only got to be right once. They just keep plugging away and up here, whoop, found the hole, and they get in. But the fact that this company, two times, two different cryptocurrencies being mined, compromising customers, that is a massive, for a company that specifically is for patching and securing systems, that is a massive breach of trust between the clients. So that's huge to me and it makes me worry constantly because I see so many people that love these uh, outsourced automation tools that are things like for all your documentation we'll just put it all in the cloud and we'll keep it secure and it has full access to every one of your clients and everything in there and this is why I try as much as I can to have solutions that are transparent and I don't mind paying extra money because the security thing is huge and I'm not making any uh, libel claims against them I'm reading off their own website and their patches on here and this is quite scary to me i feel as though they're downplaying it because in granted yeah we don't see any evidence that financial someone got in there and turned your systems into a mining for crypto mining that is a massive problem that is what if they would have done something worse what if they did other things and we don't know it because we didn't see it because they just didn't do anything that was suspicious what if they downloaded from dropbox and re-uploaded from a target uh a, you know a financial list or anything else don't see it well how would you see it we only know what we found we don't know what we don't found but we know if there was a hole that allowed someone to do this we would love it. And I would love a full debrief. So if, if uh, someone from Kaseya wants to reach out to me and and uh, one of their security guys and give a debrief, that'd be awesome. I'd love for them to publish it. I really want it to be public. I don't mind interviewing off a video, but I'd like it to see public because we really want to know to to gather trust. I mean, when security mistakes happen, I just covered one on Grammarly the other day. They fixed it. They admitted to it. They pwned up to it. We made a mistake. Someone found it. And I'm hoping, and I'm trying to reach out to some of the security researchers I know because there's so many of these different tools like this out there, SolarWinds, Kaseya, uh, ConnectWise, and but this is big. I don't know of any vulnerabilities that were discovered, found, and that this happened to with the other ones. If, if you have links to them, I'd be more than happy to read into it. Uh, but this Kaseya one popped up. I've seen a couple of people post about it, but it doesn't seem to be getting the traction. But it still scares me, and I want more security researchers hopefully you're raising an interest because this is really popular in my industry as the IT uh, industry. We're all using some type of tool like this, and uh, we want these tools to improve and not be we creating the risk that we're trying to prevent from the clients because that's where this really gets scary and it bothers me a lot though that i cannot find anything other than the cached google version 
of that page. So there's the page, and if you see the uh, right here, the dash da 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 page not found. So when you yeah Google's cache copy, you click on it, it just redirect, and you can see page not found. So why they take it down? Is it because it's embarrassing? I mean, the reality is if if you fail, leave it up there, disclose you know, that it happened, we move on, we build trust, we talk about how it's not gonna happen again, we debrief on it. Uh, page not found is, I don't think, acceptable. That's my opinion on that. And, uh, but yeah, this is definitely concerning that twice they were hit with miners too. Two different miners, but still the same concept. And of course, they went through all the security because they use Dropbox. So the hackers, they evolve. They know that there's this, so here's this. And the fact that this was reactionary, not proactive, also very scary. So let me know your thoughts on this. I'm really curious. Uh, and if you know of any of the other major uh, RMF fighters are in this market that have uh, had this type of thing. I didn't, I'm just not aware of any, uh, but I, it appears to have happened twice now to these people. Um, that's just, that's really scary to me. So uh, just think about that when you're out there looking at products. Uh, if your job is protecting your clients, what's your plan B if this happens? Um, how do you save the embarrassment? Did, did any of you tell and share with your client? Because if you found it and all you do is remove a Bitcoin miner, do you disclose them? You're probably in violation if you didn't. Uh, and this is becomes a moral and ethical hacking question. If a client's compromised and are a financial service provider, should they follow their own procedures for compliance and then let people know that there's a chance that someone because they unauthorized app on there this is dealt with in hospitals all the time even if they didn't necessarily get the client data that you can prove but they were in the system that had all the client data you now have to do some disclosure there's laws regarding this so this is just some thought provoking i hope and and some real concerns i have with this and this is what had me upset about uh this morning i'm like this is crazy that it happened twice to this company and he deleted the page and too many of these companies and i'm not going to call out any it people i know but in some of the peer groups I belong to, so many of these people seem overly focused on price and you're doing a disservice to the community because people trust you as an IT person and you're like, well, if I switch providers, I can make 10 more percent or 20 more percent. Yeah, but are you thinking about the security of that company? If they're half the price of the competitor, is it because the competitor is greedy and just charges too much for the product? Or they're going, hey, good security guys cost a lot of money and that was, you know, that's our payroll. This is also comes back to transparency and companies, please disclose more to us so we have a better understanding of uh, what's going what on and uh Kaseya, please debrief us on this we run we would love to know all the details uh that's how you build trust back in the community so uh thanks for watching if you like to comment here like and subscribe and uh, let me know your thoughts on this i'm, I'm curious